A penalty kick commonly known as a penalty or a PK is a method of restarting play in association football, in which a player is allowed to take a single shot on the goal while it is defended only by the opposing team's goalkeeper. It is awarded when a foul punishable by a direct free kick is committed by a player in their own penalty area. The shot is taken from the penalty mark, which is 12 yards 11 meters from the goal line and centered between the touchlines. In practice, penalty kicks result in goals more often than not, even against the best and most experienced goalkeepers. This means that penalty awards are game-changing decisions and often decisive, particularly in low-scoring games. Similar kicks are made in a penalty shootout in some tournaments to determine which team is victorious after a drawn match, these are governed by slightly different rules. Procedure. The ball is placed on the penalty mark, regardless of where in the penalty area the foul occurred. The player taking the kick is to be identified to the referee. Only the kicker and the defending team's goalkeeper are allowed to be within the penalty area, all other players must be within the field of play but outside the penalty area, behind the penalty mark, and a minimum of 10 yards meters from the penalty mark the penalty arc denotes 10 yards from the penalty mark. The goalkeeper must stand on the goal line between the goal posts until the ball is kicked. Lateral movement is allowed, but the goalkeeper is not permitted to come off the goal line by stepping or lunging forward until the ball is in play. The assistant referee responsible for the goal line where the penalty kick is being taken is positioned at the intersection of the penalty area and goal line, and assists the referee in looking for infringements and or whether a goal is scored. When the referee is satisfied that the players are properly positioned, they blow the whistle to indicate that the kicker may kick. The kicker may make fainting deceptive or distracting moves during the run-up to the ball, but once the run-up is completed they may no longer faint and must kick the ball. The ball must be stationary before the kick, and it must be kicked forward. The ball is in play once it is kicked and moves, and at that time other players may enter the penalty area. Once kicked, the kicker may not touch the ball again until it has been touched by another player of either team or goes out of play including into the goal. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Infringements. In case of an infringement of the laws of the game during a penalty kick, most commonly entering the penalty area illegally, the referee must consider both whether the ball entered the goal and which teams committed the offense. The following infringements committed by the kicking team result in an indirect free kick for the defending team, regardless of the outcome of the kick. A teammate of the identified kicker kicks the ball instead the player who took the kick is cautioned. Kicker feints kicking the ball at the end of the run-up the kicker is cautioned. Kick does not go forward. Kicker touches the ball a second time before it touches another player includes rebounds off the goal posts or crossbar in the case of a player repeatedly infringing the laws during the penalty kick, the referee may caution the player for persistent infringement. Note that all offenses that occur before kick may be dealt with in this manner, regardless of the location of the offense. If the ball touches an outside agent i.e., an object foreign to the playing field as it moves forward from the kick, the kick is retaken. Topic. Tap penalty A two-man penalty, or tap penalty, occurs when the kicker, instead of shooting for goal, taps the ball slightly forward so that a teammate can run onto it and shoot. If properly executed, it is a legal play since the kicker is not required to shoot for goal and need only kick the ball forward. This strategy relies heavily on the element of surprise, as it first requires the goalkeeper to believe the kicker will actually shoot, then dive or move to one side in response. It then requires the goalkeeper to remain out of position long enough for the kicker's teammate to reach the ball before any defenders, and for that teammate to place a shot on the undefended side of the goal. The first recorded tap penalty was taken by Jimmy McIlroy and Danny Blanchflower of Northern Ireland against Portugal on 1 May 1957. Another was taken by Rick Coppens and Andre Pitters in the World Cup qualifying match Belgium v Iceland on 5 June 1957. Another attempt was made by Mike Trebilcock and John Newman, playing for Plymouth Argyle in 1964. 
Later on, Johann Cruyff tried the same with his Ajax teammate Jesper Olsen in 1982. Arsenal players Thierry Henry and Robert Perez failed in an attempt at a similar penalty in 2005, during a Premier League match against Manchester City at Highbury. Perez ran in to take the kick, attempted to pass to the onrushing Henry, but miskicked and the ball hardly moved, as he had slightly touched the ball, he could not touch it again, and City defender Sylvain Diston cleared the ball before Henry could shoot. Lionel Messi tapped a penalty for Luis Suarez as Suarez completed his hat trick on 14 February 2016 against league opponent Celta de Vigo. <laughs> Saving tactics Topic. Reading. The kicker. Defending against a penalty kick is one of the most difficult tasks a goalkeeper can face. Owing to the short distance between the penalty spot and the goal, there is very little time to react to the shot. Because of this, the goalkeeper will usually start his or her dive before the ball is actually struck. In effect, the goalkeeper must act on his best prediction about where the shot will be aimed. Some goalkeepers decide which way they will dive beforehand, thus giving themselves a good chance of diving in time. Others try to read the kicker's motion pattern. On the other side, kickers often feign and prefer a relatively slow shot in an attempt to foil the goalkeeper. The potentially most fruitful approach, shooting high and center, i.e., in the space that the goalkeeper will evacuate, also carries the highest risk of shooting above the bar. As the shooter makes his approach to the ball, the goalkeeper has only a fraction of a second to read the shooter's motions and decide where the ball will go. If their guess is correct, this may result in a missed penalty. Helmut Duckerdam, Stuart Bukarešti's goalkeeper, saved a record four consecutive penalties in the 1986 European Cup final against Barcelona. He dived three times to the right and a fourth time to his left to save all penalties taken, securing victory for his team. Topic. Use of knowledge of kicker's history A goalkeeper may also rely on knowledge of the shooter's past behavior to inform his decision. An example of this would be by former Netherlands national team goalkeeper Hans van Brooklyn, who always had a box with cards with all the information about the opponent's penalty specialist. Ecuadorian goalkeeper Marcelo Elizaga saving a penalty from Carlos Tevez in a match between Ecuador and Argentina, revealed that he had studied some penalty kicks from Tevez and suspected he was going to shoot to the goalkeeper's left side. Two other examples occurred during the 2006 FIFA World Cup. Portugal national team goalkeeper Ricardo in a quarter-final match against England, where he saved three penalties out of four. The quarterfinal match between Argentina and Germany also came down to penalties, and German goalkeeper Jens Lehmann was seen looking at a piece of paper kept in his sock before each Argentinian player would come forward for a penalty kick. It is presumed that information on each kicker's habits were written on this paper. Lehmann saved two of the four penalties taken and came close to saving a third. This approach may not always be successful. The player may intentionally switch from his favored spot after witnessing the goalkeeper obtaining knowledge of his kicks. Most times, especially in amateur football, the goalkeeper is often forced to guess. Game theoretic research shows that strikers and goalies must randomize their strategies in precise ways to avoid having the opponent take advantage of their predictability. Topic. Distraction The goalkeeper also may try to distract the penalty taker, as the expectation is on the penalty taker to succeed, hence more pressure on the penalty taker, making him more vulnerable to mistakes. For example, in the 2008 UEFA Champions League final between Manchester United and Chelsea, United goalkeeper Edwin van der Sar pointed to his left side when Nicolas Anelka stepped up to take a shot in the penalty shootout. This was because all of Chelsea's penalties went to the left. Anelka's shot instead went to Van der Sar's right, which was saved. Liverpool goalkeeper Bruce Grobelaar used a method of distracting the players called the spaghetti legs trick to help his club defeat Roma to win the 1984 European Cup. This tactic was emulated in the 2005 UEFA Champions League final, which Liverpool also won, by Liverpool goalkeeper Jerzy Dudek, helping his team defeat Milan. 
An illegal method of saving penalties is for the goalkeeper to make a quick and short jump forward just before the penalty taker connects with the ball. This not only shuts down the angle of the shot, but also distracts the penalty taker. The method was used by Brazilian goalkeeper Claudio Tafel. FIFA was less strict on the rule during that time. In more recent times, FIFA has advised all referees to strictly obey the rule book. Similarly, a goalkeeper may also attempt to delay a penalty by cleaning his boots, asking the referee to see if the ball is placed properly and other delaying tactics. This method builds more pressure on the penalty taker, but the goalkeeper may risk punishments, most likely a yellow card. A goalkeeper can also try to distract the taker by talking to them prior to the penalty being taken. Netherlands national team goalkeeper Tim Krul used this technique during the penalty shootout in the quarter-final match of the 2014 FIFA World Cup against Costa Rica. As the Costa Rican players were preparing to take the kick, Krul told them that he knew where they were going to put their penalty in order to get in their heads. This resulted in him saving two penalties and the Netherlands winning the shootout 4-3. Under new IFAB rule changes, if the penalty taker attempts to feint or dummy the opposing goalkeeper after completing the run up to the ball, the taker will be punished with a yellow card, and will not be allowed to retake the kick. <laughs> <laughs> Scoring statistics Even if the goalkeeper succeeds in blocking the shot, the ball may rebound back to the penalty taker or one of his teammates for another shot, with the goalkeeper often in a poor position to make a second save. This makes saving penalty kicks more difficult. This is not a concern in penalty shootouts, where only a single shot is permitted. These factors would give one the impression that penalty kicks are converted almost 100% of the time. Missed penalty kicks, however, are not uncommon, for instance, are the 78 penalty kicks taken during the 2005–06 English Premier League season, 57 resulted in a goal, thus almost 30% of the penalties were unsuccessful. A German professor who has been studying penalty statistics in the German Bundesliga for 16 years found 76% of all the penalties during those 16 years went in, and 99% of the shots in the higher half of the goal went in, although the higher half of the goal is a more difficult target to aim at. During his career, Italian striker Roberto Baggio had two occurrences where his shot hit the upper bar, bounced downwards, rebounded off the keeper and passed the goal line for a goal. Saving statistics Some goalkeepers have become well known for their ability to save penalty kicks. One such goalkeeper is Brazilian goalkeeper Diego Alves, who boasts a 49% save success rate. Other goalkeepers with high save rates include Claudio Bravo, Kevin Trapp, Samir Handanovic, Gianluigi Buffon, Daniel Subasic, and Manuel Neuer. History Early proposals The original laws of the game, in 1863, had no punishments for infringements of the rules. In 1872, the indirect free kick was introduced as a punishment for handball, and later for other offences. This indirect free kick was thought to be an inadequate remedy for a handball which prevented an otherwise certain goal. As a result of this, in 1882 a law was introduced to award a goal to a team prevented from scoring by an opponent's handball. This law lasted only one season before being abolished in 1883. <laughs> <laughs> Introduction of the penalty kick The invention of the penalty kick is credited to the goalkeeper and businessman William McCrum in 1890 in Milford, County Armagh, Ireland. The Irish Football Association presented the idea to the International Football Association Board's 1890 meeting, where it was deferred until the next meeting in 1891. Two incidents in the 1890 1 season lent additional force to the argument for the penalty kick. On 20 December 1890, in the Scottish Cup quarter-final between East Stirlingshire and Heart of Midlothian Jimmy Adams fisted the ball out from under the bar, and on 14 February 1891, there was a blatant goal-line handball by a Notts County player in the FA Cup quarter-final against Stoke City. 
Finally, after much debate, the International Football Association Board approved the idea on the 2nd of June 1891. The penalty kick law ran, if any player shall intentionally trip or hold an opposing player, or deliberately handle the ball, within 12 yards from his own goal line, the referee shall, on appeal, award the opposing side a penalty kick, to be taken from any point 12 yards from the goal line, under the following conditions. All players, with the exception of the player taking the penalty kick and the opposing goalkeeper who shall not advance more than six yards from the goal line shall stand at least six yards behind the ball. The ball shall be in play when the kick is taken, and a goal may be scored from the penalty kick. Some notable differences between this original 1891 law and today's penalty kick are listed below. It was awarded for an offence committed within 12 yards of the goal line the penalty area was not introduced until 1902. It could be taken from any point along a line 12 yards from the goal line the penalty spot was likewise not introduced until 1902. It was awarded only after an appeal. There was no restriction on dribbling. The ball could be kicked in any direction. The goalkeeper was allowed to advance up to six yards from the goal line. The world's first penalty kick was awarded to Airdrionians in 1891 at Broomfield Park, and the first penalty kick in the Football League was awarded to Wolverhampton Wanderers in their match against Accrington at Molyneux Stadium on 14 September 1891. The penalty was taken and scored by Billy Heath as Wolves went on to win the game 5-0. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Subsequent developments. In 1892, the player taking the penalty kick was forbidden to kick the ball again before the ball had touched another player. A provision was also added that if necessary, time of play shall be extended to admit of the penalty kick being taken. In 1896, the ball was required to be kicked forward, and the requirement for an appeal was removed. In 1902, the penalty area was introduced with its current dimensions a rectangle extending 18 yards from the goalposts. The penalty spot was also introduced, 12 yards from the goal. All other players were required to be outside the penalty area. In 1905, the goalkeeper was required to remain on the goal line. In 1923, all other players were required to be at least 10 yards from the penalty spot in addition to being outside the penalty area. In 1930, a footnote was appended to the laws stating that the goalkeeper must not move his feet until the penalty kick has been taken. In 1937, an arc colloquially known as the D was added to the pitch markings, to assist in the enforcement of the 10-yard restriction. The goalkeeper was required to stand between the goal posts. In 1995, all other players were required to remain behind the penalty spot. The Scottish Football Association claimed that this new provision would "...eliminate various problems which have arisen regarding the position of players who stand in front of the penalty mark at the taking of a penalty kick as is presently permitted." In 1997, the goalkeeper was once again allowed to move the feet, and was also required to face the kicker. The question of fainting during the run up to a penalty has occupied the International FA Board since 1982, when it decided that, if a player stops in his run up, it is an offence for which he shall be cautioned for ungentlemanly conduct by the referee. However, in 1985, the same body reversed itself, deciding that the Assumption that feigning was an offence was wrong, and that it was up to the referee to decide whether any instance should be penalised as ungentlemanly conduct. From 2000 to 2006, documents produced by IFAB specified that feinting during the run up to a penalty kick was permitted. In 2007, this guidance emphasised that if in the opinion of the referee the feinting is considered an act of unsporting behaviour, the player shall be cautioned. In 2010, because of concern over an increasing trend in players feinting a penalty kick to deceive the goalkeeper, a proposal was adopted to specify that while feinting in the run-up to take a penalty kick to confuse opponents is permitted as part of football, feinting to kick the ball once the player has completed his run-up is considered an infringement of Law 14 and an act of unsporting behavior for which the player must be cautioned. Topic Summary
Topic: <laughs> Offenses for which a penalty kick was awarded. Since its introduction in 1891, a penalty kick has been awarded for two broad categories of offenses. Handball Serious offenses involving physical contact The number of offenses eligible for punishment by a penalty kick, small when initially introduced in 1891, expanded rapidly thereafter. This led to some confusion, for example, in September 1891, a referee awarded a penalty kick against a goalkeeper who lost his temper and kicked an opponent. Even though under the 1891 laws this offence was punishable only by an indirect free kick. The table below shows the punishment specified by the laws for offences involving handling the ball or physical contact, between 1890 and 1903. Since 1903, the offences for which a penalty kick is awarded within the defending team's penalty area have been identical to those for which a direct free kick is awarded outside the defending team's penalty area. <laughs> 